Hello everyone and welcome to Norwich Theatre and I'm on the stage on the set of Ladies of Letters and joining me today are Tessa Peake Jones and Gwyneth Strong. Thank you so much for coming today, it's been lovely to talk to you. Um, Tessa, you've been touring since the start of May for this production. How does it feel to be in Norwich at the moment? It's great, we arrived yesterday so obviously we're, we're still getting used to things but um, every place we go, it's a delight. That's part of the joy of touring. Mm. You, you discover a new city, or if you've been... I was last here 35 years ago, so of course it, it's very different. I yeah. hardly recognise any of it now. And last time, I was saying, my digs were on a, a narrow boat, and we went up and down the broads, four oh, of us lovely. in the play. I know, it was a bit mad, really. <laughs> so all I remember is the quick dash from the broads to get to the theatre and back. Okay. So this whole city centre, everything's so different. Mm. And the theatre, I think, is probably the same inside, mm -hmm. although it may have been refurbished. But it's just, yeah, it's a delight. I think we're going to get to know Norwich this week while we're here. Yeah, absolutely. Have you been exploring a lot of, of that as well? Well, we haven't had time yet because we've got a matinee today, but certainly we will tomorrow yeah. and Friday. We'll be able to look around. I want to see the cathedral. Mm -hmm. I believe I can't see the castle because that's under renovation. Yeah. But, and obviously the shops, because, you know, when you're Explore at the market, end, yeah. <laughs> explore the shops. Got to spend. <laughs> and Gwyneth, how exciting is it to be working together again on this, on this stage adaptation of the show? Oh, it's been amazing. Um, it, it sort of came out of the blue in a way, mm. and uh, it's turned out to be a really great fit for Tess and I. And as we've said before, we didn't get to work together that much mm -hmm. on uh, Fools and Horses oh, because okay. our characters didn't, uh, connect and talk to each other that often so it's mm. been really lovely to have this experience and uh, and doing theatre is so different anyway. Of course and you mentioned Only Fools and Horses I'm a fan I still watch it to this day as well and like many other people across the country still watch it. From working together to acting on stage now what do you think your friendship as actors brings to this show? Um, Gwyneth, we'll start with you. Okay, yeah, um, I th well, I think it's, a, it's a, an interesting piece mm. and it's quite unique because um, the two women are in their own worlds but they are communicating with each other and I think if you have, and it is about friendship, yeah. and we have that for nothing, mm -hmm. so we've had it for over 30 years, yeah. so we didn't have to really even think about that, so actually the start of rehearsals, we didn't spend any time on it because we had that, so we could just actually work on these characters Absolutely. and who they were. And how about you, Tessa? Yeah, I mean, I think, as Gwyneth says, there's a sort of short time when you know it, someone that well. Yeah. And you either get that when you work together a lot, say, on stage, mm -hmm. or you get it if you're very good friends. And, you know, now we were the very good friends, and now we're working together on stage. So we're sort of combining the two. And, yeah, it's been, I mean, it's been lovely because, you know, off stage and on stage, mm. that friendship, you know, it's lovely, of course, on stage to be sharing, although we don't actually, we hear each other's yeah. letters, but we don't actually sort of communicate to the very end. But it's that thing also of arriving in a new town or mm -hmm. city and you, you're with someone you know and you can, yeah. you know, just experience that bit and try a new restaurant together. Mm -hmm. Things that would take time if you were with a company or with another person you didn't know very well. Yeah. And we often say, uh, Tess, oh, Gwyneth wouldn't like this. And I go, oh, Tess will hate this <laughs> or, or she'll love this. So we really know which what, what will yeah. suit each of us. Have you kept lovely. in touch over the last mm. 30 years? Or quite a lot then. A, a lot, lot. Yeah, 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 we have. Yeah, far yeah. more, actually, than when we used to work on Only Fools and Horses. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, there was never time then, you know. Yeah. You were coming and going and filming your individual bits, yeah. usually without each other, mm -hmm. unless it was a big sort of nags head scene where there yeah. was everybody involved. So uh, in a way, it was after that programme finished and as our family commitments lessened, Cool. that we were able to meet up and have more fun mm. and you know go out for dinner or lunch yeah. or whatever and yeah. chat and it was a very special moment for both of us in mm. our career so that's yeah. a very bonding a shared experience like that oh, lovely yeah and Tessa we'll start with you what do you like and what do you dislike about your character in the show well my character is called Irene and she's quite um particular I think she's she's probably quite controlling you get mm. the feeling through, through the way she talks about her life at the beginning and then the journey she goes on, that, that she's been quite uh, possessive about her. She has an only daughter. Yeah. Quite possessive about that and, and in a way sort of trying to not exactly take over but wanting to be very involved in the daughter's life and then the daughter's marriage and then mm -hmm. the husband. So uh, she's a widow. So she's obviously lonely as well, I think, and rattling around. The, the daughter's now got married um, and has left the house. So she's sort of, for the first time ever, on her own mm. properly. Um, I like her... 
courage which she learns about during the play. Yes. I like her sort of her chutzpah, you know, her um, daring, which yeah. again she develops through through the friendship actually with Vera, which gives her confidence, I think, and also through the things that happen to her during the play. Of course. I think her, yeah, what I dislike probably is that controlling thing to that extent yeah. where you're sort of slightly emotionally manipulating, mm -hmm. particularly to do with the with your child I find yeah. that always a little bit of a warning sign mm. personally so um, yeah that's the bit I perhaps don't like so much but even that during the play gets shed yeah you know as she finds more about herself and her own journey she needs the other things less and it's more about her own confidence and her own worth mm. and not relying on someone else to give that to her via a child or a husband or whatever so I think uh, that bit I admire I admire mm -hmm. that Lovely. How about you, Gwyneth? Um, yeah, I think um, I, I don't like her snobbishness. Mm -hmm. I think Vera is snobby, and uh, I, I don't really uh, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do like her. Um, she's quite honest in a way, and sometimes that is hurtful. Yeah. But it's very funny too. Yeah. So obviously <laughs> that's great, mm -hmm. and you, you know, and it's lovely to play. Um, and I think she has some of the controlling thing as well and I think she's unaware I think she feels um, that everything's okay in her life and yeah. actually as the play progresses she learns um, through this friendship that perhaps it's not and I admire the fact that she does go there and she does face up to that and she takes a big risk in the end with of her course. life and I mean you both mentioned about how your characters often kind of change as the play progresses but also it's I said this to you last time it feels very personal like with the audience it doesn't feel like a show where there's lots of singing and dancing everywhere <laughs> you are talking out to the audience for, for practically the whole show and it's it, you have that personal connection and I feel that the audience then share that journey with you then throughout the rest of the show it is beautiful um, the stage, uh, the radio show on BBC Radio 4 started in 1994, I believe. How do you th feel that the stage adaptation is now relatable to audiences today? Well, Jonathan Harvey's adapted it. Mm -hmm. He's a really, really good writer, stage writer and telly writer. Um, and he's managed, I think, to take the essence mm -hmm. of these two women and their humour and the adventures they go through, all of which has come from, from the original books and their yeah. radio series and telly. But what he's managed to do, I think, is, is um, perhaps why it's relatable now to an audience, wherever we go in the country, is he's managed to bring them to 2022. Mm -hmm. He uses a few references that the audience will, will yeah. know have happened in the last, well, he, he includes COVID, yeah. you know, things that, that are. And I think he's also, he decided to bring their ages down a little bit. Okay. I think originally they were in their sort of mid-70s. Mm. And he was very keen that they should be about 60 because he feels the journey they go on should have a longevity. There mm -hmm. should be something like that they could go on trips for sort of 30, 40 years ahead. Yes. And if you place them at too much of an age, that might not be possible. So I, I think he's been very clever in that way too. And mm. he's, do you know, I mean, he's taken the original humour, I imagine, that was already there, yeah. but just made it slightly more, uh, I think, more a personal feeling of, of us being on the stage and the audience being so close to us rather than listening on radio. Mm -hmm. Of course, how about you, Gwyneth? I'd just like to say there is a little bit of dancing. <laughs> there certainly is. Oh, there is. is. There is. Moi, oh, yes. <laughs> just to say. Let's say that. That's quite interesting. Vera <laughs> dancing. Um, no yeah. singing, though. No, definitely. <laughs> and that's a relief on my part, I can tell you. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think yeah, Jonathan is genius. Mm. I mean, he's done a great job. And it's, it's tricky because he's held on to the humour that... Um, Lou Wakefield and Carol Heyman put yes. there that was so successful for so long. He's held on to l most of that and he's injected some of his own and modern up to the date, up to the minute. Yeah. And it's blended beautifully. Of I mean, course. it really has. And we, we didn't know whether it would, you mm. know, when we walked out on the first night. It was terrifying anyway because mm. we've both got to do a lot of talking <laughs> and we've had to learn that, obviously. Uh, but it was also, will it work? Will people? And it did. And yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's really proved itself that that combination has come together beautifully, I think. Mm, definitely. And lastly, start with you, Gwyneth. What would you say to encourage the Norwich audiences to come and see the show this week? Oh, the Norwich audiences are fantastic. Mm -hmm. I've been here before and I love the response we get here. And this play is right up their street mm -hmm. and I really want to see them here. So please, please come along. Take, take time out and, and live a, a different sort of part of your life, really, by coming yeah. to the theatre. 
Tessa? Yes, I think, I think uh, if nothing else, this show and hopefully the way we do it is, is pure entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I think at the moment, anywhere in the country, but let's say Norwich, because that's where we, we're here and we're very pleased to be here, life's pretty awful, some of it on the outside at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. So if you can come here and just switch off for two hours, give yourself that time, you will, I promise you, go out feeling better than when you came in. Mm -hmm, definitely. Well, if you're in Norwich this week, come on down. Come on down to Norwich Theatre Royal. You can book tickets online at www.norwichtheatre.org or call our box office on 01603 63000. Tessa, Gwyneth, thank you so much. Thank you.